You're watching Two Button Crew. The daily show for Nintendo fans. This is Simeon. And this is Scott. Youch. Uh, Sorry for slapping, buddy. <laughs> Nintendo makes a lot of great games, main entries, and a ton of spin-offs. I think because they have such great IPs that they kind of milk them, maybe? Yes, there's there's lots of milking going on. If there's one thing that, <laughs> that Nintendo <laughs> likes to do, it's, it's make milk. <laughs> yeah. And so, we have here the top 10 Mario, or not Mario spin-off games, but Almost. Nintendo spin-off games. <laughs> Almost, like... There's a bunch of Mario yep. spin-off games. So, top 10 Nintendo spin-off games. Sadly, our number one was, or number two, sorry, was going to be Star Fox Assault. But Scott ruled that out because it kind of is a main entry. I mean... It's a lot more main than Adventures. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. And Command. I think it's a main entry, so... Yeah. So, so we had to, you know, boot that off, but we had plenty to go with, so... Yeah. No, no biggie. And if you would be so kind as to start us out. Absolutely. Number 10 is Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness for the GameCube. The first video game that had an emoji in its title. Yes, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, Pokemon XD, it was a fantastic game. I don't even remember what XD stands for. Do you know what XD meant? They said that they made a game with an extra dimension or something, but they didn't really. No. It, well, I was 3D. It was like a Pokemon game, but 3D kind but of. Coliseum was before. So. Yeah. So it didn't have an extra dimension. There was no fourth dimension to it. Right. So it was it was a lot of fun. It had a really cool mechanic that I think we've talked about before, where you catch the shadow Pokemon mm -hmm. that are demon possessed or whatever. I can't remember what <laughs> it is, but and then you gotta take them to uh, Exorcist Joy. Yeah, Exorcist <laughs> Joy. <laughs> this is really weird but it was, it was a lot of fun it was like one of the main entry pokemon series without the wild encounters mm -hmm. which can get a little bit tedious yeah but without them completely it was a little bit more difficult like you had to deal with what you got mm -hmm. you could not just go out searching for more pokemon necessarily yeah now the Pokemon game, number nine is Pokemon Snap. Yes. It's so beloved. Yes. Uh, it might be the most requested thing on the virtual console. Maybe the most requested thing for a sequel. I don't know. Oh, yeah. It is still talked to to this day. And whoever just had the idea to take a franchise like Pokemon, turn it into some uh, fun photography sim, don't know what happened with that guy, but it was brilliant. Yes, it was. It was genius. I don't think anybody would have looked at this. In fact, I think I looked at this and said, there's no way that can work, and there's no way that that's fun. But I remember playing it, yeah. and from the first time playing it, I was hooked. And I don't think another like photography game since has really capture this i mean i know no. there's a few like ghost things on the yeah. 3ds but none of it has stuck pokemon Fatal snap frame. it uh earned its part in our heart absolutely indeed it did mm -hmm. number eight are mario party games now there's some that are good there's some that are not so good my favorites are two and seven i really liked two. Oh wow um, I think that one I probably had the most time with, and 7 is another one that I had a lot of time with, mm -hmm. for, uh, N64 for 2, and uh, GameCube for Mario Party 7. Yeah, and I think that's been a great series, but I know that um, it might need to adapt a little more mm -hmm. over time than it has. I think our culture is a little bit too fast-paced for Mario Party these days. Um, so I hope that they make some good adjustments yes. somehow. They've adjusted the series, but I haven't really paid attention for the last couple of entries, so I don't know how this nine and really ten tiny work. things. I mean, they did try to make it move faster by keeping everybody in a car mm -hmm. together, but that was the wrong solution. So, yeah. so it, it. it's a good it's good to be on number eight there. Mm -hmm. uh, number seven is Luigi's Mansion series. Yes. Uh, both of the GameCube and the 3DS version and the arcade game. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, can't really speak it. to that one, but uh, <laughs> yeah, Luigi's Mansion. What a crazy idea to launch a new system, the GameCube, uh, with a Mario game. Not, yeah, not seriously. Not featuring Mario and not featuring any platforming. Can't even jump. Um, so that was really cool. And I think that that was kind of a weird move. Like, people were thinking, you know, oh, Mario, you know, you got to jump. And yep. 
you can do that. And so I think a lot of people wrote this off as like, oh, that's just a weird game where you're not even Mario. But I had a lot of fun with this game. A lot of exploration. Mm -hmm. You can try and unlock everything, get all the ghosts, all the booze in yes. the mansion. And it was it was challenging. There were you know more difficult modes than just the regular mode. And I really, really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Me too. Indeed. Number... Six is the Pokemon trading card game for the Game Boy. Now, I don't know if you've ever played this one. I played PC, TCG. Okay, so you've played similar mm -hmm. things. We've And we've played um, the trading card game, obviously. Maybe we'll do an episode of that. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, um, this faithfully recreated, like, the trading card game in... The, just the Game Boy. I only had it for a weekend. I rented it from the video store, mm -hmm. which tells something about how I grew up. But I think it was the only video game I ever rented from the video store besides, like, uh, years later. Not I. I did that all, all over the place. Yes. But it was a blast, and a lot of the batteries are dead now from that game. So, I don't know. Is this on the virtual console? I don't think so. Probably not, no. They need to make it for virtual console. Well, Pokemon TCG is rebooting and like putting out uh, Gen One Pokemon cards again. You remember that? But, yeah, like, I did hear about that. They're stronger and stuff. So, yeah, maybe uh, they'll make a new one with those same Pokemon. Maybe Captain Toad Treasure Tracker coming in at number five. Um, they experimented with this game as little side levels in 3D World, mm -hmm. and people did like them. So they made an entire game based off of it. And it was great. You got to play as Toad. You got to play as Toadette. You got to rescue one another and take turns and stuff. And um, this game is chock full of replay value because you can beat the levels. But there's um, just like in Mario, there's the hidden, you know, three things per level. Oh yeah. And there's all that kind of stuff. Plus, if you buy a Toad amiibo, then it hides a Toad within each and every level. It, like goes back and um, brings in new replay really? value to the entire game once again. So. It's a great value and a really good gameplay mechanic. Genius, Nintendo. Yeah. Genius. All right, number four is Super Mario Sunshine for the GameCube. Now, this game was another game on the GameCube that people didn't expect. Yeah. And they didn't expect it to be good, but I think people have realized that this is a very good game, however different it is. Yeah. And... It's uh, like it is a main entry, but it definitely spun off. Yeah, it, it was enough of a spin off mm -hmm. to where we included it. And I think it's one of the more difficult ga uh, games of the series yeah. because, you know, there's certain missions that are really difficult. And we've already Just talked about the, the pinball. The stuff you had to do it was yeah. crazy. Absolutely insane. So much stuff, like so many blue coins. I know people who have gone through and 100 percent of it, and I think that they're absolutely insane. I have given up on trying to 100% this game. <laughs> but not because of it being bad. No, not because of it being bad, but because of it being insanely you other, difficult. You got other life ambitions. Absolutely. Hyrule Warriors is a fantastic spinoff. Indeed. Uh, spinoff slash mashup. They just put Zelda into Dynasty Warriors. Mm -hmm. And um, even more Hyrule Warriors goodness is coming on the 3DS. Linkle. Linkle and uh king of red lions and all that good stuff um what, the reason that it's on here and so high on the list is that it's just a, an extremely fun mechanic mm -hmm. and it has a uh, good co-op play too so it's such a simple hook and you can just sit down and enjoy it with a friend or by yourself and um have a ton of fun absolutely it's a blast i love playing with you it is fantastic yeah number two is super mario rpg for the super nintendo this game is so good like it's basically a perfect matchup mashup of mario and rpg square rpg because mm. square and nintendo had a partnership back in the day and Ma wonder of wonders cloud is in smash bros now so yeah. it might happen again so you would always yes. always talk to me about this oh game. geez you're like, play. I think you got me to buy it on the virtual console yep. and everything. You never finished it, did you? Shame on you. Shame, shame, shame on you. But it it has the overworld, like, 
your Mario, you can jump around, you can go through towns, mm -hmm. and it has that Mario element to it, but it definitely has that excellent RPG element to it with also a Mario flavor to it. And it really did kind of kick off the other Mario Brothers yeah. uh, RPG entries. That's so. right. And yes. deserving of the number one spot yep. is a game after these honorable mentions. Uh, Pokemon <laughs> Coliseum, we alluded to that. And then Super Paper Mario yep. was also kind of a spinoff from the Paper Mario spinoff series. Yes. And it was just its own thing, and it was really awesome. Number one is the Mario Kart series. Indeed. I think originally they might have sold a few copies because it had Mario characters on the front, but mm -hmm. then Mario Kart really came into its own thing. It's totally its own game. It's a system seller. Absolutely. And it is a ton of fun. Um, they do a great job with the characters, with the carts, with the courses especially. Mm -hmm. So many of the courses are so memorable. It's just fun to memorize them, learn the shortcuts and stuff, mm -hmm. and just master all the items in every game. What a great series. In fact, it is. And just this last week, my wife and I went back and played the first one. Nice. The Super Nintendo one. We took turns uh, playing on that. And it has aged really well. Like, even the first one. I, I know a lot of people, when they think of Mario Kart, they automatically think of the Nintendo 64 version. Yeah. Because that's what everybody grew up with. But even the Super Nintendo one holds up really well today. So... You, sir, have married correctly. Yes, I have. <laughs> Indeed, I have. Thanks for watching. Thanks Love for being you. part of the crew. Don't forget to like, to comment, to subscribe, and most of all, to share with your friends if you liked what you saw. We'll see you next time. Signing out.